Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming to this event, an audience with the Nobel Peace Prize winner, Professor Mohammed Yunus. I feel honoured and proud to be here tonight with you all, and I hope that this will be a very important event for the future of our country. We have an extremely influential audience in the room tonight. We have leaders of Scottish industry, CEOs from Scotland's leading businesses are here tonight, representing billions of pounds worth of turnover. We have senior executives from across the financial sector, including David Cumming, the head of equities at Standard Life, Ian Steele, lead partner from Deloitte, and representatives from across the board at RBS. Leaders in the academic world are here. Simon Clark, the head of economics at Edinburgh University, and Pamela Gillis, the principal of Glasgow Caledonian University. A government minister, John Swinney, the cabinet secretary for finance and sustainable growth. Also present are the future of Scotland. Students from various universities studying business, economics and politics. We meet here tonight at a time of an almost perfect storm of social challenges. In the wake of the 2008 financial crisis, we are living through global economic turmoil. Stock markets at record lows, the euro in crisis, record levels of unemployment and welfare reliance. At the same time, private executive reward out of control. Half of the world live on less than $2 per day. One billion people live on less than $1 a day. 40% of the world live on 6% of the global income. When the world economy fails because it will not incorporate half of the planet, it falls over, and it has. The world has passed its regenerative capacity to give us energy. We are now digging into the very bones of the earth, the rock itself, to try and get a little more gas, a little more fuel. This is the giant Ponzi scheme that we call the global economy. But could it be otherwise? Besides business needing to regenerate growth, is there something missing in the makeup of the market itself, in the makeup of capitalism itself, maybe we can alter that, and maybe it should start here. To introduce Professor Eunice, I'm now going to welcome arguably the most prestigious Scottish entrepreneur and businessman that there is. He was famously Scotland's first ever homegrown billionaire. He sold his first business at the tender age of 37 for 260 million. He publicly noted Andrew Carnegie's pronouncement that he who dies rich dies thus in disgrace. With this philosophy, in 1998, he founded his own philanthropic fund, the Hunter Foundation, and a private equity vehicle, West Coast Capital, with the bulk of the latter's profits destined for his philanthropy. He has subsequently invested 50 million in philanthropic causes, working with the government in Scotland to drive the enterprise agenda as well as towards poverty alleviation in sub-Saharan Africa. Knighted for his services to entrepreneurship and philanthropy in 2005, please welcome Sir Tom Hunter. And before Tom starts, if we could just roll the introductory video. Thank you. We created a joint venture company with Danone. Danone is the food company, it's the water company, and the yogurt company. You know, Danone yogurt, everybody likes it. So this is called Grammy Danone Company in Bangladesh. I met the chairman of Danone in a chance meeting. And we were discussing and I suggested to him, why don't we create a Grameen Danone company in Bangladesh? He said, to do what? I said, to produce yogurt. He said, your yogurt is very delicious. <laughs> I said, for a special purpose. We can produce yogurt to address the problem of malnutrition among the children of Bangladesh. 
we take all the micronutrients which are missing in the children, put it in the yogurt, and make it very cheap so that the poorest children can afford it and eat it. There are millions and millions of children in Bangladesh who are malnourished. Experts tell us that if a child eats two cups of these yogurts per week and does it over a year, he or she will regain the full health. He said, I agree. He shook hands and he said, I said, I haven't finished yet. <laughs> I said, it will be a social business. He said, what is a social business? I explained to him, in this business, social business, you can invest, but you cannot take any dividend. You can take all your investment back, recoup all your money, but after you have taken back the last penny, it stops. Company continues to earn profit, but it is not your profit. It's company's profit. Company continues to expand and reach out to more children because it is driven by the social objective. He again shook hands as I agree. This time I thought he doesn't understand my English. <laughs> but later on I exchanged emails explaining everything. I said, please confirm if you understand each other. <laughs> he gladly sent me back as I understood every word of it. Let's go ahead and do it. And we created that company. We are selling that yogurt now in Bangladesh. She gets a batch of supplies from the Gamin Danone factory and then she sells it in the village. We have a special program for beggars. So she might be a member of that group that as a beggar she joined Gamin Bank to take a loan and start the, the business. And instead of begging around, now she sells around. So it's a transformation by itself. This particular job with uh, selling yoga came in very handy. She knows the families all around the place. Uh, she knows where she can sell this stuff. And people support her because she used to beg. Now she's uh, selling something. So this is good for everybody. If this becomes successful in this cluster of villages, then all we have to do is to repeat this all over Bangladesh, because as a business, once if you put it in a business format, then the sky's the limit. You can expand it as many ways as you want, because it, once you get this engine started, it never stops. It runs by its own steam. And that's where the difference between charity and a social business. In charity, when you give the money, it goes away. It never comes back. So charity dollar has only one life. If you use it, is done. But if you can define this or design this into a social business, then suddenly that social business dollar has endless life because it recycles, starts moving back and forth again and again. So you touch many more lives and it continues ever and ever. I think Muhammad Yunus is probably in my top three entrepreneurs of all time. An immensely impressive man, great, great um, um, depth, um, kind of great um, human connection. The story of the Green Bank and how it started is unbelievable. It's a fascinating story. He looks at a challenge which was lending in his country of Bangladesh and all the barriers that were there and he just overcame them by great intelligence, great determination and never giving up. Um, absolutely, there is a role for um, social business. And his idea of the social business is totally inspiring. And I think Scotland should adopt this. And I really think we can lead in the Western world on this. And I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about it. Okay. Thanks very much, Josh. And a very warm welcome along for what's going to be an amazing evening. Um, first of all, a couple of words about um, young Josh. Um, 